Today we're looking at a new amp from Surge Audio. That's right, they are back. This is a budget-minded amp. If you guys don't remember, check out previous videos I've done on Surge Audio amps, including a 4K and a 7K amp I did several months ago. This model today is called the PL3000.1D. The PL stands for Power Light. These are Korean design amplifiers made in China, which means you get a lot of bang for your buck. Let's see what it's all about. Here you can see the base remote cable has plenty of length to get from the front to the back of your vehicle. It is connected via a Cat5 style connection to the remote base knob, which we're going to show here. It has Surge Audio on it. It is made out of metal, has that solid connection on the back, and it has all the goodies, the voltage, the temperature, power, protect, thermal, clipping, all that good stuff. But when you power it up, she is bright. You might want to get some tint to block out some of this brightness here because she be bright, yo. Here on one end of the amp, you can see we have inputs and outputs that are Tiffany style. Very nice, very beefy. Also power protecting clip lights, gain control, subsonic and low pass filter. Those are all metal potentiometers, very good quality. And then further here on the side of the amp, you can see the remote connection for the base knob, phase control from zero to 180. And then we have an output master input slave switch and in and out for the RCAs to go to another amp so that you can strap amplifiers together and get more power if you need it. And here's the flyover over the top of the amp. It is this kind of muted gray color. I'm gonna show here a comparison of a vehicle that is painted in this kind of color too. Uh, one O or zero gauge inputs for power and ground. Remote connection there in the center. It is spaced off enough so you can use dual inputs if you want. There are double speaker outputs, even though this is a mono block amp, it helps for connecting multiple speakers or dual voice coil subwoofers. Allen key connections there on the top to screw everything down. Very nice, this is kind of what we expect from most mono block amplifiers these days. Here on the exterior, Surge uses this unique color of gray. Actually, Kia uses the same color on their car. They call it ceramic silver. If you've ever seen one of these on the road, you know it looks really cool. As far as ratings, 4 ohms, 1,000 watts, 2 ohms, 2,000 watts, or 1 ohm, 3,000 watts. Also said to be low ohm stable. Now these are currently on sale for $299.95 at the time of this video. It is a limited pre-order, I'm told. So check links in the video description. I'll have all the information down there. As far as dimensions go, 16 inches on the length, 7.2 inches on the width, and 2.5 inches on the height. Now if you're in the market for a 3,000 watts, 10 since a watt is cheap, especially for one of this proposed quality, we will find out. Let's fire up the dyno here on the left. We'll see the power output in watts in the middle, the ohm load on the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp display so that we can calculate the efficiency using DC amps. First up, we'll run the four ohm test where the amp is rated 1000 watts at 14.4. Some example 4 ohm wiring, a single dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series gives you 4 ohms, or also two 4 ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel gives you 4 ohms. Certified test is first. If you don't know the, all the tests, I'll leave a link in the video description to a video that talks about all the different tests and what they mean. 14.05 at 14.52. So yeah, even at 14.4, a little less, you're going to get well above 1000 watts, no doubt. Uncertified up to the clipping point, which kind of is what a class D mono block I think should be rated at, in my opinion, 1516 watts, right at 14.46. So this is about a 1500 watt amp at four ohms. Dynamically, we sent a 40 hertz pulse track into the amp using the amp dyno disc that's provided, 1588 watts at 14.69. Now the efficiency, very good at four ohms, 88%. That is what we like to see with a Class D monoblock. Next up, two ohms, the amp is rated 2,000 watts to 14.4. If you have a single four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel, it gives you two ohms. Also two, two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel will give you two ohms. And people like my Mickey Mouse drawings. Thank you very much. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Certified test first, 1% distortion. Can we get that 2,000 watts? I bet we do. <laughs> yes, we do easily. 23.55 at 14.23. So we're even a couple ticks under 14.4 and easily got the 2000 watts. Uncertified up to the clipping point. 
Let's see what we get here. Quite a bit more, over 2,500, 2,535. Again, that same 14.23. That's looking good. Dynamically, to send that pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amp. And yes, we're getting over 2,700. All those sevens in there, good luck. 2777 to 14.69. What about the efficiency? Still very good, 84% at two ohms certified. Now let's try the one ohm test where the amp is rated 3000 watts at 14.4. Some examples of wiring choices, two ohms dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel gives you one ohm or two four ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in parallel and together in parallel. <laughs> Here we go, certified test first, 1% distortion. And can we get it? Yes, 32.19 at 14.17. But our voltage is not quite there, so we re-ran it with voltage a little bit higher, right at 14.4, right about the same. 31.95, so right about 3200 watts at 14.4 volts. Nicely, nicely done over the rated number. It's not a huge amount, but hey, it's still, you're getting a little bit more than you pay for. Uncertified to clipping. Again, this is the test I like for Class D monoblocks. 3646 right at 14 volts. Plenty of power. As long as you have the power to feed the amp, it's going to give you the power. Dynamically, look at this, over 4600. 4603 at 14.57. Now at one ohm, the efficiency does drop some. 71%. This is not unusual for Class D monoblocks to kind of lose their efficiency when they get to that lowest ohm load rating. Results here, you can see all the different tests as well as the efficiency, including the 8 ohm test, which I didn't show you. Also, those who want to see me abuse the amp, make sure you stick around all the way to the end because we will do the test under one ohm. But now let's find out, do it bump do power in the quad box. Are you ready for it? I haven't really shown this one before. Let's try the subwoofer system test about halfway through by power supply. Let's try the woofer test, Surge Audio 3K. Three kinds of bass. I sometimes hear people ask, why don't I see the full output here when you're doing the subtest? Well, a lot of cases I don't turn it up that high because it sounds really good at the levels I'm listening to and you cannot portray the sound over YouTube, unfortunately. Now let's find out what's inside of this 3000 watt amp. Take off the six screws on the bottom. I know there's a plexi bottom, but it just makes it easier for you guys to see the interior of the amp when I take the plexi bottom off. Here you can see the flyover. There's the power transformers, the rail caps, some chokes, got some resistors, some modules, all kind of goodies. Here you can see 35 volt, 1200 microfarad on the power supply section. If we add them all up, there are a bunch of them, small ones, but there are a total of 16,800 microfarads of capacitance on the power supply section. We have 160 volt, 1800 microfarad, two of those, and then 680 microfarad, 160 volt. We have eight of those, so total 9,040 microfarads of capacitance for the rails or for the outputs. Overall, the internals look good. Korean design, Chinese manufactured to save you a little bit of money. I don't see any issues with craftsmanship or workmanship. Looks good overall to me. Now let's talk about the pros and cons, things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. Rated Power Plus, yes, it easily made its rated power. Has active cooling with a fan and also stands off a quarter of an inch due to the mounting feet. Has a variable subsonic filter, Tiffany style RCAs. Nice base remote with all the information that you need. 
It is linkable or strappable and it definitely stayed cool during my testing. Things to be aware of, the fan is loud. If it's in your trunk, you probably would never hear it. LED on the remote is very bright. Pre-order versus release price. You might as well get one early if you want one. Is it low ohm stable? We will find out. In full disclosure, Surge Audio did pay for a spot on my channel to show off this amplifier. But as usual, everything here is factual based on test data or my opinion. So thanks as always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Now for those who stuck around, we're going to do the low ohm testing as promised. 0.8 ohms, not rated. Let's see what it does. Certified test first, a 1% distortion. And here you go, 3400 and 45 watts at 14.3. Let's try the uncertified test up to clipping. Here we go. 40 hertz tone right at 4000. 4,032 at 14 volts. Check out the current pull, 452 amps. Yes, my friends, you're gonna need strong electrical to be able to run these amps low ohm. So you just have to remember that you are getting a lot of power for the price, but you do have to provide it the power. 5331 dynamically at 0.8. Now let's try 0.67. I don't know why you do this, but I was told to test it at all the different ohm loads. So that's what I did. 3,710 watts of 14.3. Next up, we'll reset it for the dynamic test. I'm sorry, the uncertified test up to clipping. And let's see how high above 4,000 we get. 4,331, 13.95, pulling 491 amps of current. Now dynamically, 0.67, here we go. 5246, 5782. Can we get over 6,000? Yeah, 6,010. Yo. No way. And finally, the most brutal test you can do on an amplifier, really using the amp dyno, is a half an ohm certified test, which loads the amp down to probably like a quarter ohm. 3656, 14.29. Now let's try dynamic. We did not run it uncertified at half an ohm because that's just nuts. Here we go, <laughs> over 7,009 watts, and we have our friend Cube that wants to say something. Damn it, Bob.